record. Okay, welcome. This webinar is called Choosing the Right Platform and is based on our experiences across the Woodcroft folk. Hi, my name is Debs McCann. I'm the Director of Development um, and many of you will know me and we have talked about projects and safeguarding over the time. So as a little reminder, this session will be recorded. We're asking all participants to mute their microphone and turn off their webcam. You can use the chat function to ask any questions. You'll find the chat function as a little speech bubble, possibly in the right hand corner of your computer or laptop or whatever device that you are using from. In this session, we're going to be looking at the various video conferencing platforms that have been made available. We will look to identify the opportunities, restrictions and any risks of different video conferencing platform and share experiences of participants to date. When we get to the point about sharing experiences of participants, you are welcome to contribute. Uh, and I will, if you wish to say something, please use the chat function and I will unmute you so you can share it with the group. Please be minded though that all audio will be recorded for other people to listen to again at their leisure. If you prefer not to speak, you're welcome to chat and I will read out your message to all participants. We will also highlight what other support uh, there is available from Woodcroft Oak and ask you to share with us your ongoing support and information needs. To make this webinar a little bit more interactive, uh, we're using a website called Menti. And I'd really like you to use your device at the moment and visit www.menti.com. When you visit this website, it will ask you for an access code and you will be asked to answer three questions, which I will open in a minute. So if you can visit menti.com and put in the access code 509230, you should get to a screen that looks a little bit like this. If you are here, I'd ask you to answer the question, what video conferencing platforms have you previously used? If you can type your response to the question, that would be really good. Hopefully I've managed to open this correctly. If you're having difficulties, please use the chat function and tell me uh, whether or not you have arrived. We've had one person respond to say that they have used GoToMeeting, which is the platform we're currently using, Microsoft Teams and Zoom. If there are other people who can respond, we'll see which is the most popular. I'm aware amongst our Woodcraft, see there are people are responding and things are moving around. Uh, I'm aware in our Woodcraft folk groups that Zoom has been very popular, that people have also been using Google Hangouts, um, and people have been using WhatsApp and, of course, Woodcroft Oak have used GoToMeeting for a while. I'll leave that question there, um, but I'm also going to try and move to a second question. Uh, if you don't keep up with me, by all means, do the questions at your leisure. Um, but here, unsurprisingly, GoToMeeting, as the biggest response, is the one that's been used the most. And as we're on GoToMeeting, that's not a surprise. Uh, the second question I have for you is, what are you hoping to use video conferencing for? You will have a list of options. I think there are nine options and you have five choices. So tick the five that you think are the things that you would like to achieve through video conferencing with your group. It may be that you're looking to do social action. It may be that you're just looking to support the group members, having a catch up in this time when we're all social distancing, or maybe even planning things for the future, that next camp where we can get together around the campfire. You may wish to review events and activities or make some craft. We have a craft session planned for tomorrow night. Singing has been ever so popular, although we are learning that singing in time together is very difficult with satellite delays or discussions and debates. I can see that some people have responded um, and I think that social interaction and just supporting each other 
are our priorities. Yesterday, some of you may have heard all about the Finns and their saunas as Paulina shared her cultural background. Okay, I have another question for you. What support do you need to deliver virtual programme activities? So there's a response here saying that reassurance I'm doing it okay. It's a good answer. Uh, I can help to do that. Um, if you have anything, by all means, it's a free flow box. You can put as many boxes in it as you like. Go ahead and give us a response. I will be able to download these later. So if you don't keep up with me, it won't be too late. Uh, and the development team and I will use your requests to shape the work that we are going to do. Tested ideas, it's what I like to see. Uh, one of the requests from our webinar from Friday when we were talking about staying safe online is a game share for games that you can play virtually um, and that will be happening later uh, this week so do watch out on the Facebook page because that's where we're advertising them all right let me try and open this uh, so that's it for Menti for the moment but I will download people's suggestions later and see how it goes so when you're choosing a platform there are things that you need to think about how many people do you wish to involve is the first question, um, particularly if some of the platforms introduce limits uh, for participants or some of the platforms become harder to use the more people you have on them. Your budget. Not all of these platforms are free, although many of the companies have introduced special office offers and extended three trials as many organisations find themselves working from home. Um, so most of the larger platforms like uh, Microsoft Teams, uh, GoToMeeting, Zoom uh, and um, others are offering free subscriptions or an extended trial period. In China at the moment, Zoom has no time limit where the free subscription at the moment in the UK limits meetings to only 40 minutes. I don't know whether or not that offer will be offered globally. I can hope so. There are other platforms such as Google Hangouts that are free um, as long as one person has a Google account and can set those up. The other thing is to think about is the digital access. Are people using and going to join you using a computer, using a, a tablet or using a mobile phone? Some of the platforms work better on different devices. And the last one is about security, how much you can control and support the safety of your group when they're in the video platform. So having a dedicated pin number or, or hosting a waiting room. So what's quite interesting is that both Zoom and GoToMeeting, you can create a waiting room for all participants. So what you can give them out a pin number they can log on with that PIN number. They wait in the waiting room until they've been approved to join the group. And that means that nobody that you don't know will access the group together. Um, you may want to set up a question in that um, waiting room so that you can automatically authorize people, um, but that is a good feature. When we're looking at the comparisons, I've just chosen the five uh, most popular ones. Uh, Big Blue Button probably isn't uh, as well known as the others. It's used a lot by schools. Uh, unfortunately, at the moment, they are being a little overrun and therefore they are restricting all new subscriptions to only 60 minute sessions and that they are not enabling new users to record. But it has an awful lot of functionality uh, that enables collaborative working. Um, Google Hangouts can be used with your Woodcraft Folk email address for those who've got at woodcraft.org.uk emails uh, and can be integrated with Google Docs, your Google Calendar and all things Google. Um, it is free and there is no time limit and you can have as long a meeting and as many participants as you like. There are certain differences with Hangouts. There are Hangouts there are chats and there's Google Meet. Uh, each one of them has a different number of participants, but all of which are free. Microsoft Teams is regarded to have the greatest security. Um, and you can also create um, team meetings 
that are not public and therefore you can't get in unless you've already been authorised and recognised by the individual. Now, both GoToMeeting and Zoom seem to be the most popular. Uh, it is believed that GoToMeeting is technically more advanced and has greater security than Zoom, but Zoom scores higher in all user-friendly tests. Um, many of our groups are using a free Zoom subscription, which does limit the, num the length of your session to only 40 minutes. Um, it may be worth purchasing the subscription for Zoom. Having spoken to lots of Woodcraft folk groups and done some research uh, with IT and technology technological colleagues, we would recommend that groups concentrate on using either Zoom or GoToMeeting. Zoom, because of its user friendliness, uh, seems to be the one that's probably most suitable for using in a group night setting. GoToMeeting and GoToWebinar uh, as a platform is perfect for doing meetings, uh, but isn't as interactive as Zoom uh, from the user's point of view. What we do need to tell you is that group who manage our online group management system that we launched in November are currently developing a free platform um, which will have the functionality of Zoom. They've received some funding from the government and are looking for organisations to test. Woodcraft Folk has agreed to pilot their online platform and will be writing to groups in the next fortnight about how uh, they can use this platform and how they can use that with the young people who are already registered um, within the group system. So in the short term, my recommendation is to use Zoom for free uh, and then look to use the new group system when it is available uh, later this month. When we're doing a direct comparison of the different platforms, for those that you pay for, the average cost is about 10 to 11 pound a month. Um, we go to meeting, you get a discount if you buy 12 months at once. Um, but if you're only looking to do this for a few months whilst we're in social distancing, that may not be an advantage to you. At this moment in time, they are offering a free uh, coronavirus trial for three months for education and community organisations. But there is a waiting list to be given login details. You can set up immediately a 14 day trial uh, by visiting their website. One of the benefits of GoToMeeting is that it is mobile friendly. Uh, you can download, download an app and you can also choose how you dial in, including with people some, sometimes choosing to dial in on a telephone. Some opportunities that it shares with Zoom is that participants can control their environment. We think this is a really important feature for privacy. So individuals can choose whether or not they have their webcams on and whether or not they put their microphones on. As organisers, you can also choose, so you can block webcams and you can mute microphones. GoToMeeting also enables participants to join without having to share their personal details, unlike WhatsApp or Skype. Uh, the basic subscription for GoToMeeting enables 150 participants, which is plenty for a group night activity. Like Zoom, there are recording functions, uh, there's a chat function and at the end of the meeting, the chat function is automatically downloaded to the organiser as a record of the meeting. We can do screen sharing through GoToMeeting like I am now and your subscription enables you to have an unlimited number of meetings, although you can only have one meeting per subscription. There is also no, length, no limit on the length of meetings. Uh, GoToWebinar provides you with a whiteboard and breakout rooms uh, for those who want to be a little bit more interactive. With Zoom, as you can see, the cost for the subscription is very similar to the cost of GoToMeetings paid for subscription. As I said earlier, in uh, sector tests, it scores much higher uh, than the other platforms for its user friendliness, its ability to put your hand up, to use the Q&A as well as the chat functions. Um, it can have up to a thousand participants if you use the paid for subscription or a hundred if you use the free subscription. 
Uh, I also have now learnt that you can have timed breakout rooms. So if you want uh, to do some small group or clan based work, you can put a group of people into a breakout room. You can have up to 100 breakout rooms if you have the paid for prescrip uh, subscription. And these timed breakout rooms will automatically rejoin and give uh, participants a, a 10 second warning that you are rejoining. You don't need to download any software to be a participant. And it also has a really good whiteboard uh, and collective collaborative drawing function, uh, which is better than the one on GoToMeeting. Most of our members have been using the free subscription. So its major restriction is that it only runs for 40 minutes. Uh, you can, however, restart a Zoom meeting immediately after one has finished. Although for most groups, I think 40 minutes for those who are new to online meetings is probably enough and it's probably a good target to aim for. When comparing like for like, Zoom has fewer security features than other uh, video conferencing. However, you can, as I said earlier, uh, there is a personal pin for each meeting. You can put people in a waiting room and approve them before they join. The meeting platform is encrypted like the others, but, uh, but apparently at a, a lower level uh, and a technical way that is beyond my uh, understanding. When you compare the functionality, you can see uh, that they are very, very similar. So screen sharing, whiteboards, messengers, breakout rooms, waiting rooms, et cetera, et cetera. Um, when you're looking at people, particularly in a group setting, if your motivation for joining is about catching up and peer and group support, on GoToMeeting, you can only see 25 webcams at any one time. On Zoom, you can see up to 49, which must be really tiny on most people's computer screens. Um, but it does mean that everybody can at least see each other. Um, it will obviously need to be moderated to make sure people aren't sharing anything that they shouldn't be sharing. Um, but I think uh, based on the feedback we've had from our groups, Zoom would seem to be a better fit with what our groups are trying to deliver uh, during their virtual sessions. I wonder an opportunity for people to share their experience. Is there anybody on the chat who would like to share what they've been doing? I know through our social media in the last fortnight, various groups and districts have been sharing their experience. So this morning, I'm aware that Waltham Abbey shared their experience of a Zoom meeting uh, for their Woodchips and Elfins, where they did a scavenger hunt and some storytelling. Um, and they their recommendation on week two is that it is good to start the meeting with a shared screen explaining things like uh, the structure for the meeting as well as the rules for the meeting uh, so people know what to expect. Now, is there anybody on the chat who would like to share their experiences? If not, I will move on. Uh, if there is anybody who decides that they would like to share something, by all means, stick it in the chat and I'll either unmute you so you can share it with the rest of the group, or if you'd prefer not to, say you prefer not to speak and I will read out your experience to the group who are here. Okay. The comment here from Adam saying no group experience but professional experience. Do you want to share that professional experience, Adam? Let's see. He says can do. Okay, I'm just going to unmute you, Adam. Uh, I think I've unmuted you. Hey, Adam. Yeah, hi, we should be able to hear you. Yeah, I've used GoToMeeting a lot with uh, Goran I realise I can hear you, but actually my volume is turned down. Let me just turn my volume up. No, my microphone was in the wrong place. Ah. Uh, hello, Adam. How are you? Yeah. What, I'm good. What's your experience? Uh, yeah. Are you saying it in a professional capacity rather than group night? Well, I've, we've we've used it for small telecons with Goran Accord in the Welsh region, uh, and that it's been working really well for that. And that's uh, GoToMeeting. And Every year. That is go to meeting. So I agree with essentially I'm backing up what you have said about go to meeting and, and Zoom. Uh, go to meeting is very professional. It's very business like, but Zoom is easy to use. Yes. Uh, uh, so I'm, 
that appears to be our experience for the rest of the membership that uh, GoToMeeting is great for broadcasting and recording and sharing screens and, and documents. Um, but some of the features of Zoom are a little bit more interactive for the whole of the audience and therefore suit the collaborative nature of a group night as opposed to a meeting that usually has a chair and has an agenda and is a little bit more structured. Yeah, I, that's exactly what I've found. So I've used Zoom a little bit socially and yeah, it's much better for that. Cool. Uh, I've also used Teams a lot in my work. Uh, and uh, so Teams is a bit more bewildering for me. The, the, there's a much greater range of functionality. But the one thing I'm impressed with in Teams and you might be able to do in Zoom is, um, um, uh, oh, what's it called? Um, uh, uh, captured subtitles, captured subtitling where it, it records what people are actually saying and, and Teams does that almost word for word. I'm, I'm really impressed. But, but both, both GoToMeeting and Zoom uh, do a transcribing service uh, that also enables you then to search that transcription afterwards. Is that what you? Yeah, but you can see that actually happening in real time on, on Teams. Uh, I think you might be able to. Yeah, it, yeah um, I've, not in, I've not investigated it though, but I might do. Cool. Uh, team, my, my experience of Teams is that it probably is very technically the best, uh, but it doesn't seem as user intuitive as Zoom. And therefore, it's got lots of functionality that none of us know how to use. Um, yeah. And, and particularly for working with young people who don't use these in their day jobs, um, something that just is easy to use is probably the one to, to recommend. So at the moment, Based on our collective yeah. learning in the last fortnight of running virtual program, Zoom is coming out on top. Um, as I said earlier in the presentation, group are working on their own version of Zoom, uh, which will be managed through the platform. Um, it will be possible to use that platform uh, to send messages across the group 24 seven. Uh, and, and have an open chat with that group as well as come together to do video conferencing um, work. So it will be interesting to see that in theory should take two weeks before it's ready for groups to use. Um, so hopefully it will be ready later this month for us to test. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Thank you. Yeah, me too. Um, I was really pleased uh, and I'm really pleased that they have asked us to test it. Let's see now where were we? Oh, yes. Um, Things about what we're not recommending at this moment in time, we are we are recommending that groups avoid any platform that requires people to share their personal contact details. Uh, we want to make sure that we respect the privacy of our group members and we don't want to open up opportunities for cyberbullying or unsafe behaviour amongst our young members. So platforms such as WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger and Skype, we are not recommending. However, uh, I think that we have to be realistic and particularly with our older members having a conversation about what platforms they are already using. So if they are already using WhatsApp, uh, being involved in a group activity with Woodcraft folk through WhatsApp isn't increasing their risk. Um, although I would recommend that we try to focus on Zoom and go to meeting. Uh, and try to make sure that young people remember the online safety tips that they've been given throughout their education of making sure that they're not sharing information and that they're behaving uh, in a safe way whilst they're online, uh, particularly at this moment in time where I'm sure more young people are spending even more time online than they were before. Um, in terms of sources of support from Woodcraft folk, Last week, we did a Staying Safe webinar, which is now available on our website for people to view. We've updated our social networking guidance. This is a document that has been updated many times over the last uh, eight years as social networking and social media and online tools have changed and evolved. In that social networking guidance, you will find uh, advice about getting consent, you will find advice about creating a group agreement and you will find top tips about how to use email, social media, video conferencing uh, with children and young people. We've also produced a virtual programme risk assessment, which is available on our website. Um, 
there it's a standard risk assessment of the things that you need to consider when you are doing virtual program rather than physical program um, much of it hopefully will be common sense uh, you may wish to add to that risk assessment if there is be particular behavior within your group that would cause a concern um, but for most of us the virtual program that we're offering is to children and young people that we already know and already have a relationship with and have a relationship with each other um, so hopefully the good relationships that they have in the physical room will now be transferred into the virtual room oh a little back to mentimeter what am i going to ask you here oh i think i'm not going to. i think i've already asked you that question which is what support uh you want from woodcraft folk if you haven't finished answering the questions on mentimeter please do so because we will use those as our work plan going forward <laughs> And if there's any questions um, from anybody in the chat, please use your chat function if you have any questions for me. Um, but I think, as I said, the collective learning of the movement in the last fortnight is that Zoom is the one that is meeting our needs best. If you would like to use Woodcraft Folks GoToMeeting subscription, please email debs at woodcraft.org.uk and I will give you details of how to use that. As I said earlier, they do offer a free trial and they are offering a three month free trial for education and community organisations. So if you wish to set up your own for your district, uh, you can do so. And I'm aware that Lewisham and Greenwich have already done so. Um, but if that's it, then I will say good night and thank you. Um, thank you, everybody. Okay, there's a message saying you might subscribe to Zoom. I think Zoom would be where my recommendation currently lies. So thank you, everybody. I will download the Mentimeter responses. Um, you may also notice uh, in the last couple of days, Woodcraft Folk have been testing online quizzes. Last night, we did a quiz for Pioneers using Kahoot, uh, which is a platform that's used by many schools uh, to engage their pupils in a little Q&A, sometimes for fun, sometimes with educational intent. Um, it worked very well last night and has unlimited questions that you can ask, a very simple multiple choice. Uh, the Mentimeter for the free subscription limits you to only three questions. Um, but you again, that's something else that you could pay for where Kahoot is free. Um, but I will sign off now and say thank you very much, everybody. Uh, good luck with your virtual sessions. Please share your experiences with the wider membership and look out for the two webinars that are coming up. One is virtual program uh ideas and one is a ga a virtual games share uh, the games that you can play with your group when you're not all in the same physical space so good night thank you and i will see you all soon